Well, welcome to the DC Sustainable Energy Utilities March 2021 Contractor Info and Tech Session. Um, today's topic will be around VFDs. And at the later end of the presentation, we'll cover some key updates um, from our program management team um, around certain technologies and programs. Um, at this time, I'd like to take an opportunity to have each of the panelists uh, briefly introduce themselves, and then we will continue immediately right into the tech session regarding VFDs. Monsi, could you kick us off? Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Well, good afternoon, folks. I'm excited that you have joined and we are looking forward to share our program details with you. My name is Monsi Talvar. I am a senior energy consultant and manager for the engineering team. I've been working with DCSU um, on specifically on the custom um, commercial and institutional program for the past eight years. And I'm looking forward to share some info with you. Hi everyone, my name is Christian Placencia. I'm a program manager at the DCSU and I currently work on a few of our uh, low income initiatives and uh, I look forward to speaking today on our prescriptive programs. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Counselor. I'm also a program manager here at DCSU. I manage the business energy rebates um, or our prescriptive program and our instant business rebates program here. Um, I'm also excited to talk to you guys about the current rebates that we offer outside of VFDs, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Great. Thanks, team. And uh, before we get into the tech session, uh, Kaylin, next slide. Just a little bit about um, the DCSU, um, just to kind of give a brief overview. The District of Columbia Sustainable Energy Utility, aka known as the DCSU, helps residents and businesses um, use less energy and save money um, on their bottom lines. Since 2011, DCSU has delivered financial incentives, tech assistance, and overall information to tens of thousands of district residences and businesses, helping them save millions of dollars on their energy costs and improve their bottom line. Our mission is really to help build a brighter economic, um, environmental uh, energy future for the District of Columbia. Uh, and with that said, uh, next slide, Kaylin, and let's jump right into the tech topic. Thank you, Monsi. Well, thank you. Um, so thanks for giving me the floor, um, VFDs, which is variable frequency drive. We very easily get into our, you know, abbreviations. So, you know, please uh, ask questions if you get too, um, you know, too ab abbreviated <laughs> throughout the session. Um, next slide. So we'll be talking about VFD basics, you know, the applications and the savings potential for this technology. Uh, also some, you know, uh, some high level tips on maintenance and how can you work with us um, and apply for rebates through the process. Um, let's kick into the VFD basics. Um, you know, VFDs, variable frequency drives is basically, you know, a huge metal box used to be huge when it was fairly introduced in 1983. It's a box with um, an inverter, uh, a bridge rectifier, and a converter. And it's basically converting a three phase uh, to a single phase, trying to control the voltage and the frequency of the motor um, as, as a result of which there's you know, savings with energy. And we'll dive in deeper into like, how it saves energy. Um, you know, this could be a constant voltage system or a constant frequency system, which means that the motor could be controlled with varying the frequency or the motor can be controlled varying the voltage. Most frequently, we use the change in frequency to control the motor between zero to 60 hertz. 60 hertz is a typical frequency um, in, in North America, and we can vary it between zero to 60. Zero being stopping the motor completely, of course. Um, and, and, you know, that's how we control the speed. And that's how, you know, that's the reason why it's called variable frequency drive. Uh, there are many synonyms, variable frequency drive, variable speed drive, and adjustable speed drive. Don't get confused, it is still VFD. Let's go to the next slide. So why is there so much push with the VFD? You know, it, it, um, 
It is vital to um, our success and in terms of uh, how much energy we can save. There's so much potential. AC motors are everywhere in industries, uh, utility, you know, steam plants, uh, uh, chiller plants, and uh, uh, central plants, and all are, again, synonymous, but commercial, residential, healthcare, and education buildings as well. For in DC, we find this almost everywhere. Um, and approximately one third of the world's electrical energy is supplied by electric motors uh, in a fixed speed centrifugal pump through a fan, air compressor applications. You know, these fixed speed applications hardly ever are actually used at full load. Most of the loads is actually reduced because the systems are oversized. Um, so by installing VFDs to the applications, you know, motor speeds can be reduced uh, and power costs can be reduced by up to 50%. Um, you know, technology has allowed the size of the VFDs to reduce and also have better performance. The efficiency of VFDs are a lot higher than they used to be. You know, like I mentioned to you before, this technology was introduced in 1984, so 35, 40 years ago. Um, you know, most commonly, VFDs are controlling induction motors, and um, induction motors are, you know, simple motors. They're inexpensive and they're easy to maintain. Um, and you know, they are they are different types of motor loads. And uh, you know, there's constant torque load, variable torque loads, and constant power load. And without getting into too much into the weeds of those we'll be talking mostly we are referring mostly in this webinar to variable torque loads and that's what we usually find in the buildings uh, versus others we might find in the industries uh, constant torque loads most commonly found in applications like centrifugal pumps fans you know typical um hvac systems and uh you know cooling tower fans and things like that uh moving on to the next slide so this is this is an image of uh, common applications. You know, there's um, the supply fans, return fans. You know, these are typically found in air handling units, also found in rooftop units, uh, cooling tower fans, um, and chill water pumps, condenser water pumps. Uh, we can also add a VFD in an existing chiller, which can save significant load. And, uh, you know, we'll be diving a little bit deeper onto like how you can apply for rebates and also how we can help you figure this out. What application suits best in your building? Next slide, please. So these are just some, uh, you know, examples of the applications. On the left, you have uh, we, this was a picture of a VFD for a cooling tower. So it was actually on the rooftop in the open. So VFDs can be installed indoors or outdoors. They are better compatible as well. And the picture in the middle is for um, a rooftop unit. Uh, and, you know, we can use VFDs for on rooftop units as well. You know, you might have uh, a grocery standalone grocery store, which has a rooftop unit, or you know, five thousand square feet standalone standalone building that can also uh, be heating and cooling the rooftop units, which has a supply fan and a return fan, and will be able to take advantage of um, this app, uh, this technology. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Um, so, what are the benefits? You know. Obviously, reduced energy use, and hence, will you know, there's less utility cost that you're paying. But they, you know, there are other advantages too, like soft start of a motor. Um, you know, motors usually are, are more complex than we think, and um, usually, when we start a motor, there's a high inrush current which can overheat the motor, and you know, basically, um, it'll you know reduce the life of the motor. So VFD can help reduce that inrush current and extend the life of the motor, reducing um, any stress. So um, you know that that help, that also helps with the long longevity of the motor as well as the cost of replacing the motor every time. Um, it also helps with overload protection. You know, motor um, the motor can be programmed into. Motor data can be programmed into the VFD during commissioning to ensure motor overload prediction is, um, you know, taken care of. Again, this can help the longevity of the motor. 
uh, they're expensive pieces of equipment compared to the VFD. So why not invest in it? Um, it also helps with correcting power factor. Um, you know, power factor can result in um, increase of en energy consumption by up to 20%. Now this happens a lot in industrial settings, not so much in the building settings. So, you know, the primary reason why we would want to install VFDs in the district would be energy uh, reduction. So that's KWH reduction, demand reduction as well. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so, you know, talking about the savings potential, um, we can see, you know, in the text on the right, you know, flow is directly proportional to the speed directly. So when the motor is controlling the pump, for example, to vary the flow of the water within the system, um, you know, the, it is directly proportional to how much power is being consumed and has directly proportional how much energy is being consumed. And you can see that just a reduction of 20% flow can reduce the energy by 50%. This power is proportional to the rotary speed to the, uh, by cube. So it's not just directly proportional, it is the cube. So it, hence there is significant energy savings uh, through the process. Next slide, please. So this is a very, very basic example of what this application can do in a building. Um, you know, fan operates 24 hours a day. However, the building is occupied eight hours a day. You know, typical, this is a typical nine to five, you know, office where people are going to work uh, and coming back. So fan needs to operate just 29, 20 hours a year. Um, and at full and full capacity, but what about a time when the building is not occupied? We just need to maintain it at minimum capacity. And, um, you know, so maybe the fan can operate at 40% load, uh, which is a minimum load. And so five, for 5,830 hours, we could save a lot of energy by reducing the load by 40%. You know, that equates to, about 34,000 kilowatt hours for a 10 horsepower motor. Um, and based on what utility rate you're paying, that could lead to 4,500 to $5,000 a year of saving. Um, you know, what would, what would it cost to install a VMD for a motor which is 10 horsepower? You know, it could be 5,000 or 6,000. That gives you a good payback of one year, um, you know, so, you could recoup the money in one year. Uh, it's very easy to install. And, you know, they are, sure, it'll cost a little higher for motors that are more than 10 horsepower. So a typical payback would be between one to seven years. Um, seven years being for the really complicated systems. Uh, in, in my mind, those complicated systems would be in a central plant situation or a um, motor that is, you know, 200 horsepower, for example. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So it is at the end, you know, VFD is an electronic equipment. So we need to ensure that we are handling it with care. And uh, we are doing a due diligence with the maintenance in order to make sure that, uh, you know, I, it's worth the investment. Um, you know, first we want to make sure that the, the motor is compatible um, with a, a <clears throat> with a VFD, that's the most important. Uh, you might have to end up replacing the motor. Um, so make sure you do <clears throat> take a look at that. Um, you know, what if a VFD fails? Like, you, you know, consider having a backup VFD just in case so that it can be bypassed. Um, you know, a lot of times you have noticed that the VFDs failed and nobody noticed it and the motor has been working at full capacity. You know, there goes the $5,000 savings and investment that we made. Um, you know, does the system have resonant frequency? Ele addition of controls and electronics often causes, um, you know, frequencies in the system, which can reduce the efficiency of the whole system. So it's important to make sure that we don't have resonant frequencies. They are transformers that help curb down uh, the frequencies. It's mostly the, you know, third resonance that creates uh, more frequencies. If I just want to get a little geeky, that's what it's called. Um, 
you know, to reduce the likelihood of possible excessive voltage overshoot at the motor terminals, the, the length and the distance between the motor and the VFD should be maintained as well. So we shouldn't, we don't want to install a VFD that is greater than 150 feet away from the motor, the closer, the better it is. And, you know, lastly, be aware of the cooling requirements and also, you know, maintain, maintaining the mechanical stresses at over speed. We don't want that because, again, it will, uh, it will stress the motor and the, the entire system. Next slide, please. So, you know, I'm very proud to say that since 2011, uh, the CSE has been able to support the installation 465 VFDs um, and over 200 sites. You know that has collectively saved 46 thousand, uh, you know, 46 million kilowatt hours in the district. That equates to 61 million dollars in lifetime savings. That's a huge amount. And you know, we, I wanted to add this to you know share the potential that VFDs had with you know, the benchmarking, um, uh, the benchmarking protocols that are coming up and, you know, the need to reduce energy in the district. Um, we are, you know, thriving for being above the median. And this is a great low hanging fruit to consider uh, with, in your properties, with your clients um, to reduce the energy. Um, and also buildings are not as occupied right now. So how can we make sure that we are not paying the high utility bills if you don't have to? Next slide, please. So how do you work with us? You know, we have two different ways that, you know, you can work with us. Um, there's a custom program and a prescriptive program. Uh, prescriptive program really supports the you know, installation of VFDs of 50 you know, any motor that is 15 horsepowers and lower, you know, those applications can be supply fans, return fans, pump motors, um, you know, and circulation pumps as well. You know, you, you can engage with us through the custom program for motors of 15 horsepowers and above, you, uh, also for, you know, VFDs on chillers and any other application uh, beyond that. We'll be diving deeper into the details of um, the custom program and prescriptive program next. So if you go to the next slide. So, you know, this is a typical custom program process. You know, we, um, it's very customized. We want to work with you on a personal level. Um, you know, if you need us to do a walkthrough uh, to identify what, uh, what motors or what fans need VFDs, uh, we will be happy to walk you through uh, that process. Uh, during COVID, we are still being engaging with customers, uh, maybe not on site, but through video calls and doing a virtual walkthrough as needed. Um, you know, if there's financing, um, I require we'll walk you through some financing options to consider. Um, however, VFD is such a um, such an easy uh, technology that financing should not be a problem, especially if it is a one year um, payback. Um, and we are always willing to offer no cost technical assistance that whether that's, uh, you know, doing analysis and helping you figure out which options to consider, um, or it is going to which, uh, which products are the best products for you. Um, and after we find the solutions, you know, on uh, find the opportunities, we also try to find uh, what the savings would look like um, so that you can make that financial decision for your, uh, you know, for your business. Um, for that project analysis, we might need data and information that will help uh, give us the most accurate information to make the um, decision that you need to make. Um, this process may include, um, you know, getting, uh, doing some data logging on site as needed. That doesn't happen, happen as often, but if you are unaware of what the operating hours are, for example, for the building, we'll be happy to do some data logging um, as well. Uh, once we have figured um, the analysis and we know the impact, you know, you know, we will wait for giving you some time and your contractor to install the VFDs. 
Um, eventually, uh, somebody from DCSU will be doing an inspection, whether that's virtual or in person, to ensure that the VFD is installed correctly, uh, is working, and you are achieving the necessary savings that we expected that you will um, in order to get that rebate check. Next slide, please. Um, so what kind of documentation or information do we need when we do our analysis? Uh, you know, one, we need the intake form, uh, which is this Excel um, table at the bottom of the slide. And we will share this video um, along with the slide deck uh, at the end. Um, and, you know, basically we need to know the inventory uh, of uh, the motor and uh, the details and the runtime, what it is serving, and what the load profile looks like. Now, the example on this Excel sheet looks, you know, very straightforward and ideal, but sometimes you might not know the answer to it, and we'll be happy to talk through it with you. Um, in order to uh, take advantage of the custom programs, you don't have to so, uh, give us information in this Excel format, but this is the information we need, whether you give it through an email, you give it to us on the phone, or you give it to us by filling this Excel form. We don't care as long as we get that to figure out what the exact savings for you would look like. Um, you know, the contractor proposal is very helpful to know the model number and the cost of the project so we can figure out what the payback is. Um, and then the existing nameplate plate pictures. Uh, building operating hours, any set points that you are using right now, and occupancy as well, because, you know, occupancy may vary in different buildings, um, and we want to keep that into account when we are calculating the savings for you. Um, and then for chiller VFDs, we'll need the chiller nameplate information. Next slide, please. So this is uh, a picture of a typical, you know, motor nameplate. And the reason why we need it is because we need the size, so basically the horsepower. In this case, it's 10 horsepower. We need the RPM, which is 1725. Uh, 1725 is typical uh, for motors. And then the efficiency. And the efficiency is the most important because motors have a particular efficiency. And we want to keep that into account when we are doing our calculations. Next slide, please. So um, we just, I just wanted to share uh, typical pictures of um, a chiller and a chiller VFD so you know what you know, we are looking for if we ask you for information. So on, um, to your left, there is um, um, the nameplate of a chiller. So this will give us information of a chiller nameplate and the, and the chiller serial number. Um, that is helpful for us to figure out what is the efficiencies of the chiller and that helps us when we are calculating the run hours uh, you know, what, what are we looking for in terms of, uh, you know, current consumption versus what the, uh, the proposed consumption would look like. And towards the right hand side is a VFD for um, a chiller. Right. Next slide, please. Okay. So what do we need for prescriptive programs? And um, this is, you know, this is true for all programs, but for prescriptive programs, we definitely need it upfront, the utility bill, um, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, the property address is for that particular utility uh, bill, then your current W9 spec sheets and cut sheets for measures that are being installed, and then the invoice. Uh, for the project and invoice is very important because that's uh, what we use in order to give you the rebates. We don't want to pay for, uh, you know, projects that have not been done. <laughs> Next slide, please. All right, and uh, I would like to hand the torch to Ashley, who's going to share more about other prescriptive offerings. Hey, everyone. Thank you, Monsi. Um, I'm going to go over, like Monty said, the current prescriptive offerings. So I'm going to talk about a little bit more of our HVAC offerings and then some other things that we give rebates for. Um, next slide. Um, so this is just a little snapshot of what products we give rebates for. You can see VFDs are on here, but we also give rebates for condensing gas boilers, condensing gas furnaces, commercial air conditioning units is one that we have just added. And then coming next quarter, so April 1st, we're going to add commercial heat pumps to this. Um, you can see that we offer, uh, there's two columns here for Burr and SMB. 
So BRRRR is business energy rebates, our prescriptive program. And the next column is our small business campaign. We're currently offering in the market rate prescriptive programs, higher rebates for small businesses. So anything under 10,000 square feet would qualify for a small business incentive. And those are a little higher. Next slide. Um, this is a little snapshot of the other commercial uh, current prescriptive rebates. So I'm sure you guys know we offer lighting rebates, anything from you know $3 up to $100, depending on what you're installing. Um, we also offer incentives for lighting controls as well to be installed with the lighting measures. Refrigeration measures ranging from you know refrigeration controls up to you know commercial freezers, commercial um, refrigerators, and then we also offer uh, rebates for food service and vending. So anything from smart power strips to griddles, grills, um, dishwashers, anything like that, we offer rebates for. Um, and for all of these uh, things, we also offer a slightly higher incentive for small businesses as well um, to get the exact uh rebate levels you can always go to our website to check them next slide um now i'm going to turn it over to christian to talk about the low income prescriptive program hi everyone this is christian placencia and uh, i will be talking about our low income prescriptive program next slide please so this program is specifically for buildings that are income qualified uh, as you know, the DCSU has a benchmark um, where we specifically work with income qualified, uh, the income qualified community in DC, and this is one of the programs that we offer. And so if your building is considered income qualified, and I'll get a little bit into what that means for us, uh, and you're looking to have lighting or HVAC upgrades, this is a good program for you. Um, the ideal customer for this program is someone who is trying to reduce uh, energy costs, kind of like how uh, Monsi talked about earlier. And also if you're trying to reduce your maintenance costs. And so currently our cap is about $100,000 per property per fiscal year. And our fiscal year ends at the end of September. Um, this cap is up until the end of March. We are trying to realign this cap to kind of better match with what we're offering on the commercial side. But up until the end of, of March, uh, the cap is $100,000 per property per fiscal year. Next slide, please. So what is a qualified building under this program? Um, so, you know, typically when you look at a single family home, you qualify someone as income qualified by looking at their income. Um, we're not gonna do that with the whole building, right? So if you have about 300 residents, we're not gonna take in uh, W-2s for all those folks. So the way that we do it is uh, we look at the, the rent amounts uh, that are paid Sorry, Christian, it looks like we might have lost you there. But um, if uh, Ashley or Rick could come in and step in and take over for Christian. Ashley, Ashley you want to take it or do you want me to? Um, you can take it. I'm not <laughs> super sorry. I'm not super familiar with uh, the low income things. Uh, no, no, no worries. I, I, I think I'm back. Can you guys hear oh. me? Yeah, yeah, you're back. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. My internet is connected to uh, some sort of uh, satellite, so I'm battling against clouds right now, so I apologize for that. Uh, I don't know how much of that you guys caught, but uh, uh, essentially, we, we look at the rent amounts, and as long as 66% six, of the residents pay less than these amounts on here, your building is qualified. Next slide, please. All right, so before you apply um, for your measures to qualify, they can't be more than six, purchased more than six months prior to applying. So if you bought something two years ago, unfortunately that does not qualify for the program. But if you did buy something um, six months or less, uh, you can apply for this program. So even if you bought something a couple months ago um, and you, you know, didn't really know that this program existed, but you did want to, you did uh, manage to get a more efficient versions of the measures, we would love to give you a rebate for it. Um, we also uh, encourage you to look at the rebate amounts at the time. We typically take every quarter to reevaluate them to see if we want to, you know, boost them up or boost them down, depending on demand. So make sure that you look at that. Uh, and also know that you get a pre-approval letter if it's after you review measures, you get a pre-approval letter for 90 days. So that means that we have earmarked funds for your project for 90 days. So if your project is going to take longer than 90 days, which is the case for some of, or, you know, something a little bit bigger, that's fine. You just have to resubmit 
your application and we will provide you with another 90 day uh, reservation if the funds allow for it. Next slide, please. Hey, Christian. Oh, no. Sorry. Yes. Go on. I was going to go through the application process, but I'll go through that after this slide. OK, I think I'm almost done. I think I only have this one, maybe another one. Okay. Uh, so these are the, the measures that we currently offer right now. You can see the ranges for them. Um, the rebate amounts are pretty ambitious, especially compared to our commercial uh, program. We understand that sometimes income qualified buildings do need a little bit more of assistance on the financing end. And so this is what we offer in regards to that. Um, we currently don't have VFDs in this program, and I know that's kind of the focus of today's uh, webinar, but we are looking to add them very soon. So I would say just you know keep an eye out for that. If you are in an income qualified building and you are looking to get VFDs, we are going to uh, add that to the existing program. Next slide, please. And that's it. So Ashley, if you want to take over, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Kaylin, if you can let me share my screen, I'm going to walk you guys through the um, application process for DCSU. So, all right, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, yes. thank you. Um, okay, so this is, so if you've worked with DCSU in the past, you know that our application process has changed from we used to use this Excel spreadsheet, but now we've moved everything online. Um, so this goes for all of our commercial and residential programs, or most of them by now. So this goes for, you know, what we were talking about, commercial business energy rebates, small businesses, and Christian's low-income prescriptive programs. Um, so this link, this website up here, rebates.dcseu.com, um, that's the website you will go to to put in an application. Uh, you can find this link any all on our websites. Um, there should be a link of like, you know, go here to apply or apply for a rebate and it'll take you here. So you don't really need to remember this website, but if you wanted to know, rebates.dcsu.com. So it's going to take you to this screen and you can sign in or create an account or fill out an application as a guest. Um, I would encourage you just to create an account on here. That way you can kind of come back in and check the status of your rebates. It makes it a little bit easier for you to get updates on things. Whereas uh, if you continue as a guest, I believe you don't really have that functionality. Um, so you're going to click sign in or create an account. Um, since, you know, this will be, you would type in your, you know, your own unique password and username and whatever um, that you put in there. And then what you're going to do, it's going to bring you to this screen that has my rebates once you make an account. So you're going to click start a rebate. And this is where you select the program. So for VFDs specifically and everything that we've been talking about, you would be commercial, obviously. Um, so here's where you can um, you know, choose between uh, market rate, small business, or low income. So here, you know, commercial existing and new construction, you know, depending on what it is. If it's less than 10,000 square feet, this would be you know, the small business rebates that I talked about. Um, this is just the regular prescriptive rebates and then income qualified is obviously the low income stuff. So based on what you pick, it's going to affect the rebate levels that it's going to show you later. Um, so I'm just going to pick, you know, commercial existing building. Um, so you'll enter your contact information, whomever you are filling out the application. Um, whatever, fill them in. Um, it's going to ask you for the address, installation, location, you know, it's going to ask you who you are filling out this application. So if you're the contractor filling this out, um, you know, you're going to mark that you're filling this out for someone else because, you know, you're the contractor. So you're going to mark someone else and put information for the property owner in here as well. Um, you know, you can enter, you need to enter the utility information if you have it. If this is a new construction, you might not have that information yet, in which case we don't need the utility bill. Um, so, you know, this is going to kind of click through, I'm just going to enter in some like dummy information in here. Just go with me for now. And then the next part, you're going to get to put in your product rebates. So you're going to click add product and choose from a couple of different categories from appliances, kitchen equipment, refrigeration, HVAC, lightings, you know, everything that we've kind of talked about. The VFDs in particular are, should be here under, um, should be here under HVAC. And then once you select the category, you can select the product, you know, down here is VFDs. And then it's gonna ask you for, you know, more specific information about them. Um, 
you're going to have to add products one at a time for all the different categories that you have, but you can obviously put in quantities if you have a couple of different drives. So, and then once you've entered, you know, once you've entered the information, you will save your product and then you can enter as many more as you need. Um, and then it should click through to the end where you can attach some, um, some of the required documents that we mentioned earlier. So the utility bill, if you have it, um, the W9, if you have cut sheets or spec sheets for the uh, measures you want to install, you can attach them there and it'll have you submit it. And then it will be sent to us. Um, if you filled this out for, if you're the contractor filling it out and there's a property manager, they will also get an email that you filled this out on their behalf and they will have to review the information and say, you know, yes, this is all correct um, before it actually gets sent to us just to make sure, you know, everybody, all the information is correct. Um, so that'll take place and that might take some time depending on how often they check their emails, but and then it'll be sent to us and then we'll review it and you know contact you guys if we have questions or move through to pre-approval as Christian mentioned earlier. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So thank you, Ashley. Mm -hmm. I will share back shortly. Great, Kaylin, are you ready? Yep, feel free to take it away. Great, thanks. Um, we're gonna cover uh, briefly, whoa, um, Kaylin, I'm seeing the tail end of the slide deck. Okay, give me one second, I have two, two things showed up. I'm on. There we are, Rick. You should be good. Great, thanks. Um, I'd like to take this time to kind of cover um, a couple specific uh, program offerings that uh, that are currently um, fully subscribed for FY21. But I wanted to make the you know the the attendees here aware that we do offer these these uh, these programs, but at this time they're fully subscribed. And it's really around our direct services um, programs, both in the low income and market rate uh, segments of, of the district. Um, typically what we offer is, um, you know, uh, near turnkey services working with our, with our preferred contractor base, um, you know, scheduling site walkthroughs with at least two of our contracted um, service providers providing proposals um, for customers to evaluate. And it's really a work order issued type direct driven process. And um, I'm not gonna get into the weeds of this since they're fully subscribed, but I do want to encourage uh, if you haven't already sign up for our contractor updates and next slide, Kaylin, that should be. Um, well, in addition to that, uh, this is also an overview of um, all the various technologies and kind of laying out generically for you all to kind of get a kind of a quick shot um, of whether it's a prescriptive, a custom type technology that we're looking at, or does it cross both arenas? So as you're working with your customer base, or if you are a customer, these are kind of uh, quick guides to help uh, see where you're going to interact with the DCSEU um, overall. Uh, next slide. Uh, and this is, yeah, this is the slide that I was referring to. Please go to this link and sign up if you haven't already for any contractor updates. Uh, this is part of our process that we will engage the market as a whole when we have RFPs, RFQs, um, contractor uh, info tech sessions like this, et cetera, um, in the future. It's, it's the best and, and easiest way for us to, to, uh, to get in touch with you all to make sure we're we're uh, providing a level of, of information and service uh, to you all in the marketplace. And at this time, Kaylin, um, can you talk a little bit about the Zoom poll we'd like to conduct right now? And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, 
workforce while you're all doing that? Yeah, so we're going to launch a poll really quickly. It'll uh, appear uh, in your Zoom window. So uh, it is just basically this question here. What topics would you like to see uh, the DCSU cover in future sessions? And the, the poll should be launched. So feel free to answer the poll while we uh, discuss, uh, discuss workforce development. Great, and while you're while you're all um, taking an opportunity, and please, um, if the, if there's something that is not listed on there that you want us to cover in future tech type topics, please put that into the Q and A section um, so we have at least a record of of that as well, so we can we can capture um, the interest of of you all as part of this process. I'd like to take this time to also just put a put a brief. Uh, 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 amount of time into our workforce development program and kind of kind of give you some backstory and some history of that and uh, you know kind of put the uh, the marketing plug per se into into this uh, twice a year the DCSU connects with with um, our local district residents um, in, in working to provide uh, up to five month green externships working with our local contractors and other organizations to help build a, uh, a career in the green green economy and green energy efficiency and sustainability realm within the district. Um, part of this, since some of you are contractors and or um, uh, property folks, uh, we, we would like to, uh, you know, always encourage folks to reach out to us if you want to become a host site or play a mentoring type role in this, uh, in this process. Um, and really, uh, as part of the benefit, it's really at little to no cost to to the company involved. Um, and during that during the program, the externs receive um, a competitive hourly salary, um, critical job skills development, um, of course, on to job training with with our mentor and host sites. Um, we do provide nationally recognized certifications um, at no cost to the externs, and uh, really uh, working on weekly training on energy efficiency topic and the soft skills of, of, uh, of the workplace. And we also offer job placement assistance. Next slide. And kind of the, you know, is, is really designed to, to basically help folks that are new to this green economy workforce. And in addition to that, reiterating that we do provide the training and certification opportunities, trying to help folks um, build a foothold into the green path of, of energy uh, efficiency and sustainability. Uh, we also want to work towards obviously reducing unemployment and underemployment in the District of Columbia. Um, the externs that we we solicit for this program have to be district residents um, as part of uh, part of the conditions and at least have um, a GED or high school diploma. Um, that's the kind of the minimum uh, requirements. Uh, next slide. And, and really just some background history um, when Kalen shares the slide deck that we've helped more than 70 DC residents um, between 2015 and 2020 to enter into this realm. Uh, we, we as a company have employed uh, four workforce development externs and we have uh, within this program an 85% um, or better job placement uh, graduation rate, um, post-graduation. Post Next slide. At this time, um, I'd like to um, thank Monsi, Christian, and Ashley for their various presentations and kind of open up the floor to questions. Um, Kalen, if you'd like to um, share any questions that have come up to date, um, I was not monitoring the chat while we were doing this. Yes, I would. Thank you so much, uh, Rick, and thank you all for attending. Thank you, Monsi. Thank you, Christian, and thank you, Ashley. Um, we have a few uh, questions and comments uh, between the chat and the Q&A. And just to make very clear that you guys can answer, ask questions in the Q&A section, if you look at the bottom of Zoom, there is a little Q&A um, tab that you can click on and ask questions. And uh, we will uh, answer them via that way. So I'll answer them backwards. The first question is, are rebates available to nonprofit or government entities?
Yes, they are. And the process is the same. All right. Thank you, Monsi. Um, we have a suggestion from uh, an anonymous attendee uh, for the poll, which is uh, how to become a DCSU contractor is a suggestion for um, future sessions. And uh, we also have a comment from Catherine here. Uh, sometimes we'll bundle lighting in with other measures in custom. All right, but we'll, we can give a few more. We have the schedule till 1.15. We can give a few more minutes for other people to ask any questions. And uh, just to make clear, I just there was an anonymous question at uh, there was anonymous uh, entry into the Q and A that said how to become a DCSU contractor. Um, I want to make sure if that's a question, um, please let me know. Uh, you can type in the chat again, or I thought it was a suggestion for uh, future sessions, future topics for uh, for sessions upcoming. If not, please you can uh, raise your hand, um, and I can. Uh, unmute you and you can ask the question again, or you can just write in the chat or the Q&A. It's a question, okay, perfect. Great. Um, that's, that's great. And just, uh, okay, future session, I, I see that now. Um, what I would recommend in the interim, if, um, if you're interested in becoming a DCSE or a deeper dive into how to participate in the various programs um, within the DCSU, feel free to reach out to me directly um, with some available times and I'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one with you all um, to kind of walk you through uh, not only how to become a preferred contractor, but also how to utilize the custom and prescriptive process um, overall. If there's any very detailed questions or, you know, something you don't, you know, you don't, it doesn't come to mind at the moment, but it may a few hours from now, certainly feel free to reach out to me. And I believe Kaylin has a slide with all of our contact info. And, and as I said, feel free to, to reach out to me directly and I'll, I'll schedule something up with you. Yes, I do. We do have a, 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 the last slide of the slide deck has everybody's communication, uh, everybody's contact information uh, here as well. And this slide will be, these, the slide deck will be sent out to you guys. Uh, soon after we end. And go ahead, Rick. Ka Kaylin, is the, is the poll still open? The poll is closed. Okay, great. And I want to thank everyone that's, that's filled out that poll information. Um, the tech sessions are really driven to, to what you all in the market want to hear from from a technical aspect and how specifically they integrate with, with our various programs and services. But um, once again, you know, in, in the interim, if there's at any time something that comes up between our tech sessions, um, I, I'm an open book. So feel free to, to ping me either via email or, or give me a, a direct call. 